was sitting like looking around campus one day and I realized that even for the business school, like especially for them, they really train you to go work for somebody else. Like there's no real opportunity that I was aware of to start your own venture, start your own company. They just want to breed you to become the next big four accountant employee or the next financial advisor. Some people obviously criticize the idea at first, but you just got to kind of put that noise aside and focus on what you want to do. And especially at such a young age, there's so many opportunities out there. So like you're going to have to get involved. You're going to have to try different things to actually find out what you like to do. So then in October, he came to me with the idea of starting a podcast about entrepreneurship and interviewing really successful people. So I just jumped right on it. I mean, I know Andre is really driven, really successful. So it wasn't really a, a question for me. It was a no-brainer to go right into it. To say is just ideas are just that. They're just ideas. And I always struggle with that as well. Like everyone has these great ideas, but the only the only thing that you have to do is to take action because those ideas are worthless unless you put them into action. Having someone say, hey, your content really brought me enlightenment or knowledge or happiness, that's just everything for me because I always look up to people for perspective and stuff like that. I look up to athletes for motivation. So if someone can do that for me, it just means the world to me really. Um, but it just shows again, like you're, you don't really realize yet how capable you are of doing things until you actually try it. Welcome to episode 97 of American Real, where this week I sit down for a conversation with the two teenagers behind the podcast, Real Talk University. Andre Heichel and Christian Bonnier are freshmen at Binghamton University and have set out to make an impact on their peers by interviewing some of the most successful entrepreneurs on the planet who deliver wisdom about what they don't teach you in the classroom. They have released nearly 50 episodes and are showing no signs of slowing down. In addition, I challenged Andre back in the first week of January 2019 to write his own book, and I'm happy to report his book is now complete and is getting ready to go to press. It is rightfully titled, What They Won't Teach You, How Young Entrepreneurs Can Find Success Outside of the Classroom. I have learned and continue to learn from these bright young minds, and I hope you too can take something away from them and tune into their show for some insightful interviews. So sit back and relax as I welcome Andre Heichel and Christian Bonnier. This is American Real. I am Roger Brooks. My guest today is Christian Bonnier. You are a freshman at Binghamton University and you're the co-host of Real Talk University. Christian. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. This is really incredible that as a freshman in college, you and your co-host Andre Heichel have your own podcast. Tell us about it. How did it happen? Right. And tell us about it's just blowing up. So mm -hmm. how are you feeling? Good. So before I even he even approached me with the idea, I was sitting like looking around campus one day and I realized that even for the business school, like especially for them, they really train you to go work for somebody else. Like there's no real opportunity that I was aware of to start your own venture, start your own company. They just want to breed you to become the next big four accountant employee or the next financial advisor. I didn't, I mean, 
it is good to go work like that route. It's not a bad route at all, but I feel like I don't know if it's for me, especially after talking to Andre for a couple months because he was really pushing the whole entrepreneurship side because his family background is big into that. So then in October, he came to me with the idea of starting a podcast about entrepreneurship and interview, like interviewing really successful people. So I just jumped right on it. I mean, I know Andre is really driven, really successful. So it wasn't really a, a question for me. It was a no-brainer to go right into it. And then from there, we did a few solo episodes filmed at the local incubator, which we're at right now. And we've since branched off into interviewing high-level guests such as Peter Sage, Steve Sims, DHH, who wrote a really good book called Rework. And then from there, it's just taken off. I mean, I didn't really know where it was going to go when we first started, but where we're at, like if I was to sit back and say five months from now, we'd be interviewing these type of people, I would have told you you were crazy. So it's off to a good start. No, that's awesome. And you guys are into episode what now? 20? 29. 29. 29. So you've been doing this for three or four months. 29 episodes mm-hmm. in and I give you the most credit because of your consistency I've taken uh, a podcast course with several uh, dozen people from around the world and very few are still doing it really? so the fact and, and very few put out even more than say 10 episodes so the fact that you guys are consistent with it you're still in school and and you're maintaining this wonderful podcast you know kudos to you thanks I think it's gotten easier over time because at first we were looking for guests and we were just looking locally like Andre's grandfather and his friend John. But since then we've reached out to hundreds and hundreds of people via Instagram and Twitter. And we've had, I think we have like 12 episodes in our funnel right now waiting to be released. So it was a bigger problem at first than it is right now. Like we picked up a pretty good amount of uh, momentum. That's awesome. No, and I know your guest list is just incredible. You mentioned some of the people like Steve Sims, Peter Sage, who are some of the other people that are on your wish list? Um, I really want to get Dave Portnoy with the whole trend of uh, America. He's big into barstool sports, patriotism, all that stuff. He's a really funny guy. Um, another guy I would like to get, which is pretty crazy, is Elon Musk. And actually somebody that we interviewed, Eric Damier, I think Damier, he is on a texting basis with Elon Musk. So just like the fact that people that we want, these high, high level guests are one degree of connection away from us is really hard to think about and it's really exciting so I'm hoping to get some of those guys in the future and I want to get some athletes I'm a big sports guy um, I would say Antonio Brown but he's gone so I don't want to get him I would like to get like Tiger Woods Stephen Curry Michael Jordan LeBron James just shoot for the stars with these guys really that's awesome and at the end of the day these guys are just average guys right just like us people are mm-hmm. people and I think it's good for you at your age to see that um, I know when I was your age when I was thinking about these big stars or athletes or entrepreneurs, you know, they seemed out of touch. Today, things are, you know, the world's a lot smaller. Mm -hmm. So you're able to reach out to someone, as you said, on Instagram and have a conversation with them, you know, over Zoom or however you guys do it, that um, is really incredible. And these, the lessons that these people are bringing to both of you, as well as your listeners, it's just fascinating. And it's, it's, it's really invaluable. It really is like whenever I'm stressed out or I need like a good perspective on my life, I sit back, play an old episode. A big one for me is a guy, Peter Sage. He's really insightful, has a lot to say about mental health. And he basically said like all the stress that you have in your life is perceived. Like you're never going to be at a point where you're dying. He pretty much said like they'll force feed you food if you don't have any money. So you might as well just go for what makes you happy. Don't worry about where you're going to be in the future. Just be happy in the present moment and everything will just work out. So that's awesome. That's awesome. So tell us a little bit more about you. Where are you from? Yeah. Where'd you grow up? And I know health and fitness is really important yeah. to you too. So I'd love to know. Right. So I'm from the that. Albany, New York area, about halfway between Albany and Saratoga. Have you ever heard of Saratoga, the race course up there, the horse racing track? So a town called Clifton Park. Um, I've lived there all my life besides a few years. I've bounced from house to house with my mother. Um, my dad's always been in a small town called Scattercoke, so that's pretty cool. But from like in 10th grade, I really flipped the switch, like you said, with the fitness. I was out of shape. My dad suggested a gym for me called Metabolic Meltdown. Shout out to Matt Phelps and those guys. So I went in the first day on a free trial, and they said, did your dad sign the waiver? And that just freaked me out. I'm like, why is there being a waiver sign? Like, am I going to have a heart attack during this? But the trainers were really opening, like open and inviting. So I went to their, that workout, came back the next day, kept going, picked up steam. Fast, like fast forward to two years later, I lost about 30 pounds, became confident in my own body. like on some muscle and now I'm really liking where I'm at with that so it's been a transformation definitely and also I went to uh, Shenandoah High School kind of on the map right now for Hawks player and Kevin Herter in the NBA right now 
Um, I didn't play sports there. I played like club basketball. I was really focused on my part-time job, my schoolwork, so I could get into a school like Binghamton because it's a really, really, really good school. I like Binghamton a lot. So at first, I didn't really know Binghamton was the spot for me because I never like I never really heard about it. But then my friend actually put me onto it. Took a visit, liked it. Came back again, liked it. Got in, came to Accepted Students Day, met some really cool people. Found out the business school was tremendous, and now I'm sitting here. So Binghamton feels like home. That's great. Um, and I know on your Real Talk U um, Instagram page, you guys have thousands of followers now. How has that been like being able to reach so many people just by putting out some content? You know, I didn't really know my reason for this at first. I just wanted to become successful, but I've really figured it out. Like just helping people, having someone say, hey, your content really brought me enlightenment or knowledge or happiness. That's just everything for me because I always look up to people for perspective and stuff like that. I look up to athletes for motivation. So if someone can do that for me, it just means the world to me, really. That's awesome. No, and I know here at American Rio, we are about giving, you know, being of mm -hmm. service first. And I think when we do that in life, when we give of ourselves, it comes back to us mm -hmm. tenfold. It's a law of life. It's a law of the universe. And it's great to see you guys doing it at your young age. So keep up the good work. Uh, I did want to mention uh, you are the first guest on our show to wear shorts. So congratulations. Authentic. And I think you have a great yeah. outfit today. I know you're on uh, spring break this week, so enjoy your week off and, and get refreshed for for the last uh, term here. Absolutely. It's flying by, by the way. Like, it's already March. I feel like in August I just got here and met Andre for the first time, so I'm trying to cherish my days here while I can. So Awesome. Well, Christian, keep up the good work. Welcome to the American Real family. We'll stay in touch. We'll watch you closely and keep on doing what you're doing. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thanks. This is American Real. I am Roger Brooks. My guest today is Andre Peichel. You are the co-host of Real Talk University. You're a freshman at Binghamton University. And Andre, as I call you, AJ, welcome to the show. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. Well, look, I talked to Christian earlier. He told a little bit about the story, but you and I were at a wedding together uh, back in the early fall. And we were talking about American Real, and you had expressed interest to me of potentially starting your own podcast. And here we are just a few months later, and I just have to say, wow, you are doing an amazing job. Yeah, I appreciate it. I mean, it's actually crazy just think back to that exact moment at Ramey's wedding. Uh, I just, you know, we got into a conversation about what you were doing. I just heard some of the things that you were doing with entrepreneurs that I looked up to. Obviously, I was in the startups and entrepreneurship before that. So just to hear that you were able to interview some of these people, it really just opened my eyes to the potential of starting a podcast. And from there, like the rest is just putting in the work. So, so let's talk about this little journey of yours over the past couple of months. Um, I know in the beginning it's usually intimidating, but you guys really took any of the hardship out of it and just did it. You didn't really worry about if there were technical issues. I know we talked about a lot of this behind the scenes, but you just kind of plowed through it. And um, how, how have you done that? Yeah, I feel like that's actually the only way it would have gotten done. Because like I myself, like I was camera shy, obviously always have been. I'm not confident with my voice, how it sounds, how people like are always hearing it, can play it back, all that kind of stuff. So I'm like really self-aware about that kind of stuff. So I feel like the only way it would have gotten done is the way we did it, just going into it blindly um, and just kind of just finding our way through the process. And it actually was more fun that way because obviously there were some things that messed up in the beginning. It wasn't perfect. And just to find where we are now, only like five months later, uh, it just feels good. Yeah, no, and you, and you talk about how we feel we're, we're self-conscious about our own voice. I think we all feel that way. We don't like to see ourselves, hear ourselves. Um, and, and it's good kind of life lesson, right? I know you did our live tribe where we asked people to go into our private Facebook group and for 21 straight days, do a one minute video. What was that experience like for you? And did, did that play at all into the confidence you're building in, in yourself and in your show? Yeah, hundred percent. Like when I first started the live tribe, I was kind of, it felt pressured almost. So a lot of my videos were kind of forced. Obviously I did them a few times, except with the live videos, you can't go back and redo it because you're live, which I thought was a great feature because it kind of forced myself to like be who I really am. Uh, so I think I found myself over the 21 days, like using it as a tool for myself to kind of document my progress, what I was doing each day, what I was focused on. 
Uh, so it's kind of like a self-awareness tool. And yeah, I think I'm a lot more confident on camera. Like I, I couldn't have pictured myself doing this today. And yeah, just with the podcast, we started to do video podcasts after that and a whole bunch of different things. What advice, AJ, do you have for other college kids out there that might be thinking about doing their own thing, whether it's a podcast or something entirely different? It may be a, you know, some type of a entrepreneurship um, idea that they have. What advice do you have for them? Well, I think the number one thing to say is just ideas are just that. They're just ideas. And I always struggle with that as well. Like everyone has these great ideas, but the only, the only thing – that you have to do is to take action because those ideas are worthless unless you put them into action. And I found that out through doing the podcast. Uh, some people obviously criticize the idea at first, but you just got to kind of put that noise aside and focus on what you want to do. And especially at such a young age, there's so many opportunities out there. So like you're going to have to get involved. You're going to have to try different things to actually find out what you like to do. It's not just going to fall into your lap. So I just think the number one thing is to be proactive about everything you do. Awesome. Who have been some of your most favorite guests on the show thus far? Yeah, I think it's always going to go back to the episode with my grandpa. Uh, he's always just been like a huge inspiration for me, uh, like growing up, obviously, with the entrepreneur mindset. Um, and then some of the recent guests, I think Peter Sage was a great one. Like just the way he thought was incredible. It's something we've never heard before. Another great one was Steve Sims. He was a really cool guy. He kind of just showed us that like, it's okay to be yourself. You don't have to try to fit in with society. And you could do a lot of great things through networking. Um, and another great one we did that we haven't released yet was with um, Adam DeGross. He's a Post Malone's photographer. And one thing I liked about his episode was that, like, you don't have to have the fancy equipment. You don't have to have the, you know, the college education that a lot of these people are paying crazy amounts out of their pocket for. It's kind of just you, like I just mentioned earlier, putting everything into action, trying different things and figuring out what works best for you. Awesome. Who are some of the guests that you want to interview in the future? Oh man, it's a long list. Um, a few notable ones I'd say is Tony Robbins. I've been following him for like ever since I got into entrepreneurship, just his videos are super inspiring, his mindset obviously. Another one I think would be cool but controversial is Donald Trump. I just think like his entire life story is absurd, especially the last few years with this presidency. Like there's a lot that you could talk about with that. Uh, and I think another one, if you kind of go back to sports, which I love would be Dwayne Wade. Uh, he's at the end of his career now. So maybe there's an opportunity for that now. Uh, he's just always been one of my favorite athletes growing up. Uh, and he's had a lot of connections with other athletes as well. So I think that be really cool. But there's also hundreds of other people that I can mention. Sure. Now, uh, I've noticed your hat. It's called Cash Flow, and I see the 10X on the side. It looks like you may have gone to the Grant Cardone event down in Miami. Is that right? Yep, that was in February. What was that like? Yeah, it was incredible. Uh, it just kind of opened my eyes because, like, obviously here in Binghamton, where we live, where I've grown up, uh, you don't really find that many entrepreneurs or people that think the same way that you do, especially in my age group. So I kind of felt isolated. Um, and then just going to that conference, there were like 35,000 people there. So just being able to see like how many people are trying to do the same things that we're doing, it kind of just validated my mindset and what I'm working on. And it just was like an inspiration for me to just keep going and keep pushing through uh, and just to level up as every tier of life. Awesome. I asked Christian the same question and I'd like to ask you, how do you maintain the balance of schoolwork, the podcast, family life? How do you do all that? Yeah, well, it's definitely hard. Like family, I think to me is most important. I think the the few, the first most important is family. Then for me, it's religion. Um, and then college obviously comes into play. Um, I'm, I mean, college to me, it's important, obviously, because my parents. Um, but like I've, I've, I can manage with college. Like I don't have to put that much time into it. Um, so that allows me, it opens up time to work on the podcast, obviously, which has been a lot of work, but it, it pays off. Like just like, obviously, it's going to be a lot of work. You're going to spend countless hours on trying to make it go well, putting out the episodes. But once you see the finished product and once you start seeing that people are actually affected in a good way by it, you're getting messages and DMs from other college kids saying, like, oh, this is great. I learned a ton. Like, it helped me to overcome this challenge, this barrier. It just it keeps pushing to keep going. And there's more time in the day than a lot of people realize. You just got to have the motivation to push through and utilize what you have. Awesome. Well, I'm super impressed by everything you guys are doing. I'm actually learning from you. 
So thank you for elevating my game. Um, but I did want to share one more story. Right after the first of the year, you and I went to grab some dinner at Core Life to get some healthy food. And I presented you with an idea. And um, you've actually took me up on that idea and made it into something special. Can you share that story? Yeah, <laughs> well, the story is we went to Core Life, obviously. Roger treated me to lunch. We were talking about some ideas about the podcast. Uh, just some things to level up and you know grow with what we were doing with the podcast and as i'm standing in line i'm ordering he's telling me all these ideas and then he pitches me an idea to write a book he goes aj you're gonna write a book and i'm thinking okay <laughs> i'm just gonna get my salad he's he's joking so we're, you know we have lunch and he keeps bringing up this idea about the book and like i've never been a good writer like i hated writing i was always ridiculed about my writing I feel like my English is just not good at all. <laughs> and like I just writing class in high school was always something that I just didn't enjoy. So I was like, there is no way I'm going to write a book if I can't even write a five page paper for English tomorrow. So, I mean, you know, I pondered the idea. Obviously, you've just been a tremendous help to me so far to kind of help me realize what I'm capable of. And I just went about it. I held myself accountable every morning. I woke up an hour earlier, set my alarm clock an hour earlier than usual. And I used that time to just figure out something that I was passionate about, which was what I'm doing with the podcast about learning outside of the classroom and finding your, you know, the full potential of yourself in every morning for an hour I'd write. And at this point I'm at like 160 pages about to finish my first book, which is actually crazy to actually say it's still kind of a shocker to me. Um, but it just shows again, like you're, you don't really realize yet how capable you are of doing things until you actually try it. Uh, and that's something that I figured out a lot recently. <laughs> Thank you, no, Roger. No, no. And look, I challenge you with that. I had no idea how you were going to take it. But I know the type of person you are. I know the type of person Christian is. And when you guys put your mind to something, you get it done. So look, you have your own podcast. You're going to have your own book. And I believe that's going to be the first of many. And you guys are off to some really, really big things. So thanks for being an example for the rest of your peers, because I think you're going to elevate their game. It's great that you're bringing on amazing guests. Keep up the good work and um, can't wait to see where Real Talk You goes in the future. Yeah, well, I appreciate all the help so far, Roger. My pleasure. It's been great. Thanks. Take care. You too. Thanks for tuning in to American Real. Be sure to visit our website, AmericanReal.tv, or search for us on iTunes or YouTube for past episodes. While you're there, please rate us or leave us a review, as that helps others find our show. I am truly grateful and appreciate all of your support. At American Real, we're on a mission to help as many people around the world fulfill their dreams and obtain their goals. If you'd like to be part of our inner circle or want one-on-one -on -one coaching, Check out the American Real Learning Academy, where we have self-help groups and courses so you can build the best you. We also have a new Facebook group where you can connect with high achievers from around the world. If you want to go even further, maybe you're determined to write your own book or launch your own podcast, contact me today to see if we could help. You can reach me through Instagram or Facebook or email me directly at roger at americanreal.tv. And speaking of podcasting, our next course will be starting soon. So if you're interested in launching your own podcast, join me and podcast your passion. I'll take you through my eight week course where I'll mentor you to build a world class podcast. I'm only taking on a small group of people who want to share their passion through broadcasting, where I'll have you up on iTunes and YouTube within weeks so you can podcast your passion. Click on the link below for more information. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next week.